Breaking news, a plane diverted from Minneapolis was forced to make an emergency landing in Green Bay this morning when it slid off the runway. That's where Max Grossfeld is right now. Max, what do you see? Good morning, Brooke. Just after three this morning, United Flight 878 ran off the runway, forcing the airport's fire department to come in and get people off the plane. It's been a very long night for these passengers. They tell us they originally took off from Houston, but were diverted to Madison when they couldn't land in Minneapolis. The flight took off from Madison, headed again to Minneapolis just after 1.15, but after circling several times, the pilots had to come to Green Bay to try to land. Now, if you've been out on the roads this morning, you know just how icy it is. Here's how one passen two passengers say they're reacting to the landing. Well, I could tell he was hitting the reverse you know, motors pretty hard and it was not going to go well. Now we don't know how we're getting home. Possibly a coach. I'm not going to be flying for a while. We've seen... Buses take people off the plane back to the terminal, but it looks like a lot of the earlier commotion has since calmed down. This is still a fluid situation, so we'll bring you as much information as possible when we get it. Keeping you connected live from Austin and Straubel Airport, Max Grossfeld, NBC 26. All right, thank you so much, Max. Now three people are dead after a small plane crashes in Indiana on its way to Green Bay. Paris Lubell from our Scripps affiliate is at the scene. Right now, Indiana State Police saying there are no survivors in this plane crash. It happened right around 739, about an hour north of Indianapolis in Carroll County. Police say at 721, that plane took off from Eagle Creek Airport in Indianapolis and was heading towards Green Bay, Wisconsin. Right now, they say again, there are no survivors. Now, our sources tell us they lost radar contact with it at 28,000 feet uh, while it was flying over Carroll County, and that was the last time they saw it. They got numerous 911 calls after that, and then when officers got out here, they found a large debris field. They called in a lot of resources to help, including some drones to start taking pictures. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board will be out here as soon as the sun comes up, starting that part of the investigation. In Carroll County, Indiana, I'm Paris Lubell. All right, back here at home, things are icy in spots, and you're like, well, why? It's 34 degrees in the Fox Valley because of the pavement temperature last night. It went below freezing, so we're getting the pavement to catch up and that rain's falling on it, so that's why we're seeing some ice in spots like on your driveway, on some of your sidewalks, and some of the roads that aren't treated. Now, we're seeing more snow to the north, but notice the back edge is already starting to move in here. We're already seeing breaks as you head through Wapaka County out of Gamey, and it's falling mainly as rain through most of Washera, Marquette, Green Lake, Fond du Lac, Winnebago, Calumet, Manitowoc. Even though it's falling as rain, remember with the cold pavement temperatures and spots, it is freezing as ice once it hits the ground. But it's not on your trees and power lines this uh, time for most of us. Here's Green Bay, same thing. Rain falling at times, but it's freezing on the pavement that's colder. But salt is fixing that. But as you head to the north, uh, more in the way of some snow, even that is tapering off. Current temps, we've got 34 in Oshkosh, 36 in Fond du Lac. So again, our temperatures above freezing, especially south of four, uh, 29. But we're still seeing some of that icing going on on the pavement because it's cold. Now, this is quickly going to improve as we head through the morning. But still, we do have winter weather advisories for most of the area. Fond du Lac, Sheboygan just dropped because things improving there rapidly. Now, as we go through the day today, just the next couple hours, that wintry mix tapering off. Look at this. We're going to do some melting today, 43 degrees. But I have another round of wintry precipitation for the weekend. Brooke will time that out coming up. All right, thanks, Fish. Now to Fond du Lac, where a man is arrested after a brief chase with police. It happened on the 300 block of 3rd Street just after 8 p.m. last night. Officers attempted to stop the 34-year-old man but had to chase him down. Police say he fired a single shot during that chase. Officers had to arrest the man at gunpoint. He's being held on a probation violation. No one was injured during the incident. Two people have been arrested after allegedly making threats to Sheboygan schools. Police say both threats are not credible, but they still take such threats seriously. They're warning the public not to post potential threats on social media. Instead, police say to inform them first to prevent unwarranted anxiety. They say if you see something, say something. All right, continuing coverage now, testimony moves on in the George Birch homicide trial where the victim's boyfriend returns to the stand. Our Matt Jarko has more from court. 
Doug Dietrich returned to the witness stand Thursday, where the defense questioned him about the morning after Nicole Vander Heiden's disappearance. You did not call the police at 6.30? No. You did not call Nicole's sister at 6.30? No. You did not call Nicole's mother at 6.30? Uh, no, I did not. Dietrich says he figured Vander Heiden was sleeping off a hangover at a friend's place. The defense noted in the days that followed, Dietrich declined to give a DNA sample to investigators and was arrested. But Dietrich tells prosecutors he was never charged in Vander Heiden's death. They then called witnesses who interviewed Dietrich. Officers described his reaction to hearing a body had been found with characteristics similar to his girlfriend's. He broke down, broke down and cried and Again, I acted what I would consider to be appropriately. Testimony then shifted away from Dietrich, but onto his home and neighborhood, where a neighbor found a key piece of evidence. I heard a click. It was uh, sounded like my blade of my lawnmower hitting something, and that, um, and I shut my lawnmower off and found a um, yes. cord. Vanderheiden may have died from strangulation. Neighbors also saw blood near the street. Investigators found evidence too. Individual pieces of hair that were stuck in uh, dried brownish red substance that was consistent with blood. They also found hair in nearby grass. The scene near the Dietrich home is believed to be where Vanderheiden was killed. In Green Bay, Matt Jarko, NBC 26. And a reminder for daily reports on the George Birch trial, just head to our website, NBC26.com. All right, let's get a closer look at the current road conditions right now for your morning commute. This is a live look at 511's winter road conditions map, and you can see lots of red showing on that map. Red means those major highways are ice covered. Pink on this map means slippery stretches. Blue signifies snow covered and green, which we're not seeing much of on this map, stands for good winter driving. Now with another round of a wintry mix moving in, roads could turn slippery once again this morning. Meteorologist Gina Recchia is live in De Pere tracking road conditions. How's it looking out there? Good morning, Brooke. We do have a little bit of some rain coming down as we speak, but the temperatures, that's a key thing. My car is showing 34 degrees in De Pere right now. The temperatures were right around that freezing mark earlier this morning and really the overnight. So there was a glaze of ice that occurred on those untreated roads. There still is a little bit of that ice, but it's starting to melt as temperatures are starting to rise up around, around the freezing mark. Uh, between my live shots, I actually went around the parking lot to take a look. I'm starting to see that ice really start to melt, but still some slick spots on those untreated roads for probably the next few hours before we really start to warm up right around 40 degrees or so. But cars, they're moving, so that is some great news as you head out the door. Just take it safe, take it easy, because there still might be some patches of black ice out there. Keeping you connected live in De Pere, meteorologist Gino Recchia sent it back to you in the studio. All right, thank you so much, Gino, for that update. Now, teachers can start going back to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida today if they're ready. The school is reopening in phases. This is phase one. Armed sheriff's deputies will be there to protect them. Teachers will have access to support services. The next phase comes on Sunday when students and their parents can come to campus for an orientation. Staff have Monday and Tuesday for prep, and the goal is to restart classes on Wednesday. New details on the police response to last week's school shooting in Florida. Investigators say a communication failure made them think the gunman was still in the school after he escaped with students. The police chief said it didn't endanger any students' lives. The armed school deputy who stood outside the school while everything happened resigned from his job. The sheriff's office had suspended him without pay while they looked into why he didn't go into the school or try to stop that gunman. Devastated sick to my stomach. Um, there are no words. That deputy, Scott Peterson, was eligible for retirement. Two sheriff's deputies there in Broward County are on restricted duty. The department is investigating how they handled 23 calls involving that gunman and his brother. Today, the Trump administration is amping up pressure on North Korea and revealing new sanctions against North Korea. President Trump is expected to announce the largest package of sanctions yet during his speech at the Conservative Political Action Conference. You might know it as CPAC. The goal is still to get North Korea to stop building nuclear weapons. The president speaks to the group this morning at 10.05 Eastern Time. The Treasury Department will give more details later in the day.
Now to the state capitol where the state assembly passes a tax break package designed to stop Kimberly Clark from cutting 600 jobs at two Fox Valley locations. The bill now heads to the state senate. Our aircraft has more from Madison. The state assembly is taking up legislation today that has the potential of saving over 600 jobs in the Fox Valley. And the authors of the proposal say Kimberly Clark is interested. Now, some lawmakers from Northeast Wisconsin are pushing for the bill that would give Kimberly Clark an incentive to stay open. Now, Republicans are hopeful that by offering Kimberly Clark a 17% jobs tax credit for the majority of their workers in the Fox Valley, they can convince Kimberly Clark not to close two of their plants in the Valley. Now, one of the authors of the proposed legislation says this is a proposal both Democrats and Republicans can get behind. I think we should all agree that the state should do everything it can to retain jobs in these 600 jobs. I wouldn't, you know, members on both sides of the aisle, Democrats especially, you've got to support these 600 union jobs. These are high paying jobs in the Fox Valley. And I think it sends a wrong signal if you're going to walk away from supporting those 600 people in the 2000 family members they support. Senator Roth says Kimberly Clark has seen their proposal and is said to be taking it into consideration. Keeping you connected in Madison, I'm Eric Crest with NBC 26. All right, outside, the farther you live to the south, the warmer it is and the more this is falling is rain, but it's falling on pavement that's at 32 degrees or below in spots. So that's why we're seeing some icing, but a little bit more in the way of snowfall to the north. But this is already starting to taper off. You see all the breaks already starting to work its way through Washera County. There are a couple breaks going over Winnebago into Calumet County as well. Here's kind of a closer look through Green Lake, Fond du Lac, Sheboygan rain. But again, in spots, the pavement's just a little bit below freezing, so that's why we're seeing some ice in spots. Notice all the breaks now in this precipitation. That will be the trend, and we're quickly going to get rid of this this morning. And to the north, yours is already tapering off as well, still holding on to a little bit more snow. That gets better over the next hour or so. Current temps, we've got 34, Manitowoc, Appleton, and Green Bay. So you see a lot of the temperatures here to the south are above freezing. We're already starting to improve things, and that will rapidly improve as we go through the morning. We get rid of that precipitation, but we still have these winter weather advisories for most of us, except for Fond du Lac and Sheboygan, where it's improved rapidly with the temperatures. And that's going to pretty much end mid-morning here as we get rid of that precip. So things get a lot better. Look at by noon. We will already be doing plenty of melting, going up to a high of 43. We do have another round of precip on the way for the weekend. I'll let you know when it gets here coming up. Thanks for being with us this morning. We have your latest sturgeon spearing numbers this morning. The DNR says 31 fish were harvested from Lake Winnebago yesterday, bringing the season total to 574. None of them were over 100 pounds. The biggest fish of the day was registered at Calumet Harbor. And this is kind of neat. Two sturgeon were speared out of the same hole within a two hour period. Cool. All right, the Midwest's largest ice fishing tournament kicks off tonight. It's the 11th year for the event battle on Bago. Fishermen can win prizes and take part in the fun in the tent at Menominee Park in Oshkosh. Scales open at 4 p.m. and live music starts at 7.30. I think it's going to be a little sloppy out there yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. And, it, you know, this morning we're getting a lot of school closings and a lot of school delays. I think we're up over 40 now, so definitely keep an eye on that. Yeah, and it sounds like the closings, especially our farther north you are, where they saw some of that icy mix and then snow combined with that. The rest of us, we're cleaning up some ice and you're like, Wait a minute, I don't see it on most of my trees or power lines this time. That's because the rain fell as the temperatures were above freezing, but our pavement wasn't. That's this system. We've got another one on the way for the weekend. I'll time out when that gets here coming up. But here's a look at Green Bay. You see in the background the emergency vehicles. We've been tracking a plane that slipped off the runway at the airport here in Green Bay, but 34 degrees. So it's above freezing as it rains a little bit, but the pavement's a little bit chillier. So that's why we're seeing some ice in spots, but things are quickly improving from the west. That's going to be the trend as we head through the morning here. Notice it's starting to break up into Washera County, Marquette, Green Lake. Here's kind of a closer look going down 23 here, up 41. Some light rain falling at times, but it's starting to break up. So things will get better over the next hour or so. Moving a little bit to the north, it's also starting to break up, even by Green Bay where rain is falling. But again, with some of the colder pavement temperatures, that's why we're seeing some ice, like on your sidewalks, driveways. Throw down a bunch of salt, it's going to work quickly, or just wait, and it's going to be melting as we go through the morning. But more in the way of snow to the north, but even that is starting to taper off right now. 
Uh, current temperatures, 34 in Appleton, 35 in Oshkosh. So a lot of us south of 29 right now are above freezing, like Fond du Lac is now 36 degrees, so they're doing plenty of melting. And watch Skycast. We're going to quickly get rid of this. Most of it gone by 8 o'clock this morning. Then a little bit of sunshine as the day goes on. But still, with any precip that's still falling in, possibly on that colder pavement, we do have a winter weather advisory still in effect for most of us until the mid-morning. Fond du Lac, Sheboygan, yours has dropped early. Things have dramatically improved there. Wind chills, if you're heading outside, they're not too bad. Feels like 32 in Ocano, uh, 28 in Appleton, 29 in Oshkosh. So there goes that round of precip. Then we keep it quiet for most of the day today into the afternoon. It's going to get mild. We'll do plenty of melting. Tonight we're going to keep things quiet as well. And actually most of your day during the daytime hours here looking fine on Saturday. Look what's on the way though as we go into Saturday night. Here comes kind of a mixed bag of precipitation. But most of us, Green Bay and South, going to fall as rain. But to the north and west, going to fall as more in the way of snowfall or that wintry mix. So this is Saturday night, one to three inches to the north and west, way off to the north and west, three to five. The rest of us, maybe a dusting to an inch. Looks like most of it falls as rain, but still we got the winter weather advisories for most of us, but see way out to the west winter storm watches. That's where most of the snow will fall in northern and western Wisconsin. So as far as today, 43 degrees, so we will do some melting quickly as we go through the morning. That wintry mix, it's already starting to end from the west. Otherwise, breezy and mild today. Quiet tonight, we calm down the winds, and then for tomorrow, the daytime looking all right, 41. But the winds are going to be picking up again, and then we see a lot of rain. Well, not a lot of rain. I'm saying more widespread rain as we go through Saturday night, but more in the way of a wintry mix and snow off to the north and west. Then it's going to be windy on Sunday, but even Sunday, more melting for us. So... Brooke, that's the key right now. Anything that's fallen and is frozen, we're going to be melting it as we go through the morning. All right, also worth mentioning, we did see some power outages this morning, just a handful. So WPS right. is reporting, so keep an eye on that. Stay with us. Thanks for watching with us this morning. The Green Bay Gamblers are holding their 19th annual Teddy Bear Toss tomorrow. When the Gamblers score their first goal against the Madison Capitals, everyone is asked to toss a new teddy bear onto the ice at the Rush Center. Last year, more than 7,000 stuffed animals were donated. It's really, really fun, and there's always a couple fans that bring like the six-foot teddy bears, yeah. and you see those coming over, and knowing that kids are going to be getting you know, all these cool teddy bears, it's really, really cool. And the stuffed animals will be given to pediatric patients at Aurora Baycare Medical Center and other community organizations that give back to children in a time of need. All right, let's turn to weather now. It's a messy morning outside. Our Michael Fish joins us live from the weather deck with more for us. Yeah, Brooke, this one's different than the last one for Green Bay and Fox Cities because it's not like stuck as far as the rain. It didn't freeze on everything. It's just the pavement because the pavement got cold last night. That's pretty much it. But look at the back edge already starting to get closer and closer to us. So the farther south you live in this event, well, the more it's just falling as rain right now, but it's still freezing on some of that cold pavement. I'm looking at it melting here actually on the weather deck. Some of the uh, cold sidewalks here have a coating of ice on it, but it's getting slushy because it's getting warmer. Here's a look at that rain actually starting to break up a little bit and taper off. And then off to the north, the farther you are, the more we've been seeing is snow and a little bit of ice this morning, even that tapering off. Brooke, give it a little while. This is going to move out. Then we're going into the 40s today, so we'll be doing some melting. All right, thanks, Fish. Still ahead, woodworking in preparation for the real world. We check in with an area high school for this morning's Partners in Education. Stay with us. Thanks for being with us this morning. It's never too early to know what your passion in life is. Students at Pulaski High School say they're honored to be doing what they love to do in preparation for the real world. Our Regina Ahn has this morning's Partners in Education. These students at Pulaski High School are following their dreams and woodworking. I started falling in love with wood and it just kind of carried into high school and then ended up getting a job in cabinetry, so it just kind of seemed like a good fit. Not only a good fit, but something senior Matt Benelingberg says he's born to do. I love making something and seeing people's faces when it's done, getting the pleasure from filming something, you know, completing it. And thanks to a course described as Raider Product Programs, Benelingberg and nine other students get to pursue their passion in a real life setting. Through the process of talking to the customer, going ahead and coming up with a design, 
coming up with the quote for the customer, and eventually we're going to get to the process of making that project. And with the help of tech ed teacher John Pitson, Ben Alingberg says he wants to stay the course and continue building. I'm hoping to stay working for the company I'm working for now. Uh, hopefully do a little side business for myself, but mostly probably stick with cabinetry. But he has other options too. If a student has good woodworking skills, they have a good eye, uh, they are able to measure, they're able to go ahead and assemble stuff, and they have those, that, those basic mechanical skills that are required in a lot of those high demand, high skilled areas. I'd say it challenges you, but at the end, you're gonna love what you do and see. Talent, heart, and hard work. They have the perfect combination to become successful. In Pulaski, Regina on NBC 26. All right, outside, look it off to the west already into Washera County Marquette. We're tapering things off already, and that's actually moving into Shawano as well. Wapaka, you're just about done with this. Now here's a closer look, pretty much along 23, north of there, along I-41. We are seeing rain, but it's falling on some colder pavement, so in spots, that's why it's been icing over, but that will be quickly improving through the morning. Here's a look at Green Bay. Same story, look at the breaks now. Things are going to start to get better as we head through the morning, and with the snow off to the north, even that's starting to taper off right now. With current temps, especially the farther south you are, a lot of us are above freezing. 34 Appleton, same with Green Bay, 35 in Oshkosh. The Skycast, look at this, in about an hour, most of this has been moving out of here. And then by the noon hour, we might even see a couple peaks at the sunshine, but still got the winter weather advisory going for most of us, except for Fond du Lac and Sheboygan, where things have dramatically improved. So here's a look as we go through the rest of our day. Notice by noon, plenty of melting going to be going on, a high temperature of 43 degrees today. Now we're not done with the precipitation. I got another round of a wintry mix for some moving in for the weekend. I'll time out when that gets here coming up.